Hello, my name is David Ritter. The following is a production of First Fandom Experience, a collaborative publishing project that brings to life the origins and emergence of early science fiction fandom. First Fandom Experience presents The Earliest Bradbury, a unique collection of Ray Bradbury's earliest writings as a science fiction fan, published in honor of the centennial of his birth. Ray Bradbury may be the most revered of the science fiction grand masters of the 20th century. Like iconic predecessors Jules Verne and H.G. Wells, his work has stood the test of time. A virtuoso composer with language, he sang the bodies electric and human. His stories have reached beyond the mainstream of science fiction, earning him recognition with the National Medal of Arts in 2004 and a Pulitzer Prize special citation in 2007. Most science fiction fans know the works of Ray Bradbury. What they may know less well is that Bradbury began his life in science fiction as a fan himself, actively immersed in the nascent community of fans in the late 1930s who would shape the genre for the next several decades. Bradbury fell in with Forrest J. Ackerman and the Los Angeles Science Fiction League in October 1937 at the age of 17. Just four months later, he published his first science fiction story, in the January 1938 issue of the club's organ, Imagination. While Bradbury's life has been extensively documented, many of his first writings as a science fiction fan from the 1930s and early 1940s have never been republished since they first appeared in amateur fanzines of the day. In The Earliest Bradbury, readers will have a unique opportunity to experience Bradbury's first steps on his road to mastery. The book brings to life Bradbury's experiences as a teenager in Hollywood, California, where he would roller skate from his job selling newspapers on a street corner to Clifton's Cafeteria for meetings of the Los Angeles Science Fiction League. Bradbury's works are presented in stunning, full-color images taken from the original fan publications in which they originally appeared. These early writings reveal Bradbury's youthful wit and allow the reader to trace his evolution as a writer, beginning in January 1938 with his first published science fiction story, Hollerbachen's Dilemma. These early writings also demonstrate a nascent descriptive style that presages the powerful lyric force of his later work. From Hollerbachen's Dilemma, January 1938. A queer noise was ringing in his ears. It grew in intensity by the second. His head felt fearfully large, his body Brobdingnagian. From Formula for a Successful SDF Story, April 1938. Have Earth fall to the moon. Have dinosaurs crawl over the hero's tummy. Let him wrestle a lion as the earth cracks in two pieces. From Hollerbachen Comes Back, November 1938, written and illustrated by Ray Bradbury. Hurtling through the stratosphere somewhere, a tiny piece of matter bobbed up and down just this side of the heavy side layer, where the rockets turn to the right and take the air lane to Jupiter, past the array of billboards hanging by skyhooks on the clouds. From Gold, August 1939. Then, with a final despairing laugh, something that was once a man dragged himself to the railing and fell down into the turgid blackness of the ocean. All was silent. From Luana the Living, June 1940. There was some grim thing that fettered this tree-bound terrain in soundless monotony. From Tale of the Mangled Dombridge, February 1941. All of them were blurted out of sight by the ravenous creature inside the door, the sardonic, silk-clad tentacle, the ravenous, awful monster of fat legs, thin legs, breasts, lips, and torsos, of armpits and crotches and other nausea, of bargains and basements and pants half off. All of these Bradbury articles and stories, and many more, are reproduced in the earliest Bradbury in full facsimile form, accompanied by rich historical narrative, Bradbury's first letters to professional pulp magazines, and accent art by Hannes Bach. 
please visit firstfandomexperience.org to see samples of the earliest Bradbury and other First Fandom Experience publications.